Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 11. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to born, to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. And today, Fano, I want to preach on the thought, make it count. So I want to share a story. And sometimes I wish I could turn back time. Make my time count. Make things right. And in the story, I remember my sister. She went to hospital for her eczema on her hand. But she also had a heart condition. So I went to the hospital here and uh, visited her. And I sort of looked, oh, what's the matter? Her eczema was playing up. So I thought, oh, yeah, they'll give you some cream, you'll be out soon. So I told her, here's my number. Give me a call if you need anything. Three days later, I received a call from her. Brother, I'm down in Wellington Hospital. I need some clothes. And I told her, sorry, I'm too busy. Four days after that, I received a call from my other sister, bawling her eyes out, saying that our sister is now on life support, waiting for us to get to her and turn the machine off. Today, it still hurts that I didn't make my time with her count. That her brother couldn't even bring her some clothes. That her brother didn't keep his word. Praise God that I've learnt from all the dumb decisions that I've made. That now before any of my family, before they even get sick, the opportunity that I have with them, I'm praying on them, I'm praying for them. I'm laying hands on them. Even though some of them may be standing right, because oh, you lost the plot. Because so I'm going about, 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 about. But I'm making my time with them count. Because I ain't going out like that again. And I encourage you today that as you begin 2022, and whatever you do, and wherever you go, make every day here on earth count. 
Ephesians 5, verse 15 to 17. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Are you going to throw your life away and leave nothing? Or are you going to invest in your life? Sacrifice your life for the lives of many. Make your life here on earth count and spend your time wisely making the most of every opportunity. I want to touch on three things from Ecclesiastes 3 about how we can make our life count. Point one, there is a time. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's your time. Make it count. Ecclesiastes 3 says there is a time for everything. If we want to make our life count, then we need to make our time count. See, time is a coin of your life. It is the only coin you have. And only you can determine how you will spend it. You can always make money, but you can't make more time. Once you have spent it, that's it. Ko mutu. I'm going to see a bit of a movie, a bit of a spoiler alert. Aroa mai if you haven't watched this movie. But when you do, make it count. <laughs> so it's called In Time, starring Justin Timberlake. Fellow that sings that, uh, cry me a river. <laughs> Said on our first service wasn't the best uh, song to pick, but far uh, all that fellow songs are high, high pitched. <laughs> so in time, this movie is about time where people stop aging after 25. Then a one year countdown on their forearm begins. And if it reaches zero, the person times up and instantly dies. And also in this movie, the world is divided into different time zones. You've got the rich time zone where they got heaps of time, then you've got the poor time zone. Sort of like here in Palmy. You've got the ghetto, Highbury, that's where I stay. Then you got Awapuni, basically our neighbours. But then you got the rich fellas staying out um Milson. <laughs> I gave a shout out to uh Kuro Su and uh, uh Kuro po and Nanny Su. They stay out of Milson and uh one night we got invited over to their whare for our uh, feed. Yeah, me and my family rocked over there, took my boy in their house, eh? Hey? Ah, dear, these fellas are rich. <laughs> they got two lounges. And they got a picture on their wall with a gold frame with a ship in it. <laughs> I was surprised they didn't have one of those uh, wharepakus with the old uh, fluffy thing on the toilet seat. <laughs> i tell you, I would have made that time count. So back to the movie, funny. <laughs> That's my movie. <laughs> back to the movie. You got the rich time zones, then you got the poor time zones. So the rich time zone, where they had heaps of time, they did everything slow. They walked slow. They had the time to uh, put off decisions and, oh, think about it next year. That's how rich they were. They had all the time in the world. These fellas were rich. They had decades on their forearm. They had time stored away in capsules. <laughs> then you got the poor time zone, the ghetto, where they only had a little time. 
So they were doing everything fast, making each second count. Ah, imagine running around with only an hour on your forearm. People will think I'm back on the gear, trying to do a hundred things at a time. <laughs> I see Justin Timberlake, he cracked it. This old fella gave him a whole decade and passed out. He cracked it and went from the poor zone to the time, uh, rich zone, where everyone had heaps of time. And he was sitting at the motel having a kai, and the lady walked up to him. You are not from here, are you? He said, no, how can you tell? And she said, because you do everything just a little too fast. And that's what the devil wants. He wants us to think we have lots of time. So we start doing everything slowly. We have the time to do that. Oh, I'll go to the gym on Monday, start again. <laughs> oh, I'm going to give this up, but we never get around to it. I want to make my life count, but I'll make it count our pupu. See, if we want to make our life count, then we need to make our time count. Sometimes making our time count means making our rest count. And I'm not talking about that rest where you're... <laughs> Had my father-in-law in town for the last few days, pitched up in the tent out the front of my house. You would have thought someone was mowing the lawns outside and all the noise was coming out of that tent. Someone was going pig hunting. <laughs> Snoring the block down my father-in-law. Hard case. Psalm 91 verse 1. Whoever dwells in the shadow of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And I'm talking about resting in the shadow of the Almighty. Dwelling in his holy presence. I remember the first level four lockdown. The world was going crazy. I was a essential worker at the time, beef boner at AFCO in Fielding, Philly. And even my bros at work were going crazy, eh? I went to work the next day and go and shake their hand, and they don't want to shake my hand, and nah, cuzzy. And I was standing, chair, check you out. <laughs> Yesterday it was hung his arm. <laughs> but then that, that fear they had, it started rubbing off on me. I started getting used to that, started tucking away where the enemy wanted me. But when I tucked away, I fell to my knees and dwelled in the presence of the Most High. And in that time, that appointed time, He reminded me, I have a purpose here on earth. And your time ain't up because you haven't even started. So I got up, picked up my cross, carried on my journey. So we can choose if we want to dwell in the fear of this world or we can make our time count and dwell in the shadow of the Most High where we will find our rest. Point two, there is a season. Ecclesiastes 3 says there is a time and there is a season. If we want to make our life count, then we need to understand the season we are in. There have been times I have uh, wanted to jump my season. It's 
Reason one is because I'm looking over the fence, poking my nose into other people's seasons, looking over at my neighbor, watching them harvest. Then what happens there? I look at my side and look at it with the stink attitude. This sucks. And by the time I get over myself, my season of harvesting is on hold. Because I spent last season doing what? Poking my nose at other people's seasons. Scrolling on Facebook. Because he's on the Harley. Where's mine? You know? That sort of thinking. And I spent all that season walking around with this think attitude. This sucks attitude. And then I had to start again and start weeding, pulling those things out and pruning myself up to start again. Because I didn't stay faithful in the season I was in. We need to understand the season we are in and run with it. Looking at these seasons, some of these times and seasons from Ecclesiastes, it says a time to plant and a time to uproot. I've got a bit of experience from uh, planting and uprooting. <laughs> the good old harvest days. Walking around with a big J in the mouth. J books blasting. Yes, I'm a ganja planter. ganja <laughs> But today I, I switched it up a bit. Let's say the, uh, the ganja planter, ganja farmer, didn't make enough money. Uh, he got the munchies and fell asleep. <laughs> Today I can say I'm still planting and harvesting, but I'm planting and preparing the field for my children, their children, and many generations after. Excuse me. With the strongest strain out there, and that's called... Faith. <laughs> we, we all walk around with a big J in our mouth. <laughs> and that is Jesus. <laughs> There's some of our who's sitting there acting like they don't know. <laughs> the times at the Hangi Pit. No way you hung around up there. <laughs> Had to wait four hours for it to uh, sit in the ground and cook. So what did they do then? <laughs> Chair cuss. Chair. <coughs> Yuck. <laughs> oh. Good old days. Then I saw there is a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. For a second, I was like, hey, what does this mean? Hmm, how can I relate to this? Then it took me back to the old uh, Jonah Lomu days, the Jonah Lomu cut days. Uh, anybody get a Jonah Lomu cut day? Or was it just me? Uh, <laughs> shout out to my dad, professional barber there, fella. <laughs> Had the old uh, 11 shaved in my head. The fringe and the body, but I actually had a rat's tail too. The Lomu cut days. <laughs> and then they had this game called Knuckle Bones. Not on PlayStation, it was outside. In those days, <laughs> we wasn't rich enough to buy Knuckle Bones, so we gave it Knuckle Stones from the driveway. <laughs> and to play this game, you had to know how to 
throw, pick up, and catch. Throw, pick up, and catch. And that's a perfect example in life in general. Watching what we throw out there, how we throw it, where we throw it. I'll give you an example. Some mornings I'm like, Oi, make your bed. Ten times. Times ten. <laughs> then I sort of stand there and, oh, hang on. I try this way, change my language. Boy, can you make your bed for dad, please? Boom. Done straight away with love. The reason why was because I pitched it to him in a way we had touched his heart. Then we got to watch what we pick up. For starters, are we picking ourselves up? Are we, are we picking others up? Am I being a Martha trying to do everything and forget the main point, the main thing? Pays to stop and check yourself. Am I happy asking yourself, am I happy here or am I it's picking things up to make others happy. Then the last one for this, watching what we catch. Pastor John preached on this, watching what we catch. The thin, the tightest, the old uh, wonder riders. My days it was uh, kittoos. <laughs> and now it's COVID. Got to mask up. Acts 20, verse 28. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made yours overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. This was written to the elders, but the principle applies to everyone. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock. I believe we are all called to be shepherds, to guide and direct people to the answer. But we've got to get the start of the scripture right. Keep watch over yourselves. Because if you know the way, you'll be able to go the way, then you're capable to show the way. You need to lead yourself to be able to lead others. Everyone here is in a different time and season. Some are in the season of being single. I tell you, enjoy it while you can. I remember when I was single, I used to think I was a bit of a stunner then. Still am. <laughs> but I remember being single. Could just take off whenever I want, how long I want. Splash money because the only person I had to feed, clothe, and care about was myself. Now I'm married, three kids. Ah, oh, story's changed. <laughs> There's a bit of a boundary system going on. They got me on a leash, a real tight one. You can see that? There it is. <laughs> I can't just take off and spend money because that's going on milk, bread, nappies, and wipes. Me. <laughs> so all you single people out there, enjoy it. Enjoy your season while you can. And all you young married people out there, I tell you, the story gets better. Then a tight leash, milk, bread, nappies and wipes, you'll be doubling it. <laughs> if we want to make it count, we need to be faithful in the season we are in. 
Point three, last point for today. God has put eternity in the human heart. This passage finishes by saying that He has made everything beautiful in its time. He also has set eternity in the human heart. If we want to make it count, then we need to focus on eternity. We are in a season where people are thinking about their priorities and goals for 2022. Most people, like myself, are setting goals for me again and again to get skinnier. Those goals are all good. But as believers, we have different goals because we have different priorities. We are not living for this world. We are living for the world to come. We are living for eternity. If we want to make it count, then we need to live in the light of eternity. Thanks so much for tuning in today. We hope you've enjoyed the program. Legacy is in an amazing season. We're seeing phenomenal things happen on a weekly basis. And we're incredibly grateful for the many people that partner with us. People that sow into our ministry financially, people that pray for us, and people that serve on the front lines. If you'd like to partner with us, you can visit us online. Have a fantastic day.